Previously on J Riot's channel, if you want to adjust the length or number of levels, you'll have to do a whole bunch of math. If you're not afraid of a little algebra, then wait for my next video, where I'll explain how to build a hoarder with a variable number of levels and length. Will J Riot be able to release a video explaining how to adjust his device? Or will the Minecraft community forever be forced to build hoarders with only five degrees of precision? Stay tuned to find out. In this video, I'm going to explain how to build hoarders with different numbers of speed rows and different pen lengths. I'm also going to explain why you would want to add more speed rows to a hoarder. The more speed ranks a hoarder has, the more precise the speed ranking will be. You can think of the speed rows as the marks on a ruler. If this 30 centimeter ruler only had three marks on it, you could only use it to determine that this box is shorter than 10 centimeters tall. If you measure another box and it is also less than 10 centimeters tall, then the ruler can't tell you which box is shorter. Hoarders work the same way. If two horses end up in the same speed row on a five speed hoarder, it would seem like they run at the same speed. But if you tried to sort the horses on a 15 speed hoarder, they could be in two different rows. That's because the 15 speed hoarder is better than the 5 speed hoarder at figuring out exactly what speed a horse has. More rows in a hoarder means more precision, but it also takes up more space. If you want to build a hoarder with more or less speed rows than the one showed in my last video, you can't just build more of them in the front or the back. Remember, that hoarder was built so that the fastest possible horse could never make it past the last marker. If you build more rows behind that marker, you're just wasting your time. No horse will ever be fast enough to make it to those last rows. Building more rows in front of the first marker won't work either, because the first marker is designed to stop the slowest of horses. If you build a row in front of it, even the slowest possible horse would be able to go right past it. That row would also be a waste of time. You also can't make the pens longer or shorter than four blocks without messing everything up. The hoarder I showed is designed to stop the fastest possible horse at this point. If we make the pens all longer by, say, two blocks, then that point on the hoarder will be moved up to here. But the fastest possible horse will still only make it to here before his time is up. You would have to give him more time to make it all the way to the end. The bottom line is that if you want to add more speed rows to a hoarder, or change how long the pens are, you'll have to change both the amount of time the horses have to run, and the distance they need to run. You can change the time the horses have to run by changing the number of ticks in the redstone. To change the distance the horses need to run, move the tripwire. So, once you know how many speed levels you want your hoarder to have, and how long you want all the pens to be, how do you decide where to put the starting point and how many ticks you need to put in the redstone? The short answer is to use these two formulas I came up with. Just plug in your values for pen length and number of speed levels and solve. The first formula will tell you the number of redstone ticks you need to put on the wire that connects the trip wire to each of the gates. The result of the second formula will tell you how far you need to put the trip wire from the last gate. If you want the long answer, then wait for the last part of this video, and I'll explain how I came up with these formulas. When you change the number of speed rows, the redstone has to be changed a bit too. In order for a hoarder to work properly, all the gates need to shut at the same time, which means the signal leading into each gate has to be delayed by the same number of redstone ticks. Unfortunately, this is easier said than done. Redstone signals only reach 16 blocks. If you need a redstone signal to go further than that, you need to add a redstone repeater. Unfortunately, that also delays the signal by one tick. Anything receiving the signal before the repeater will activate one-tenth of a second before anything plugged in after it. This means that if you just run the signal to all the markers in one big redstone line, the closest markers will close before the farthest markers. To compensate for that, we need to add some repeaters in front of the closer markers to delay the redstone signal so that they can close at the same time as the farthest markers. Here's how you can do it. First, run a redstone trail about four blocks away from the markers. 
Then, put a redstone torch at the beginning of the trail, by the marker closest to the tripwire. Run along the trail, and everywhere the signal ends, put a redstone repeater after it. If the signal ends just before a marker, put the redstone repeater just before it. The signal needs to reach the marker. Once the signal reaches all the way to the last marker, count how many repeaters the signal needs to move through before it gets to that point. This is the number of ticks that all the markers need to be delayed. Starting with the second to the last marker, go to each marker and count how many ticks the signal is delayed. It should be less than the last one, so add some delay to the repeaters so that it has the same amount. For example, the signal leading into this marker goes through three repeaters, so it needs two more ticks of delay. The signal reaches this marker without going through any redstone repeaters, so it needs to be delayed by five ticks. Add two redstone repeaters here. Set the first one to four and the second one to one. Now, you're ready to put down the tripwire that will activate all the gates. Use the first formula I showed to calculate how far the fastest horse should be able to run before getting stopped. We'll call this the furthest distance, or FD. Then, stand on a block right in front of the last marker and take a look at your coordinates. Run toward the first marker and see which coordinate changes the fastest and whether it moves up or down. In this example, that coordinate is this number, but it could be this number instead. Run back to the block before the last marker and write down what that coordinate is. We'll call it the farthest point. If the coordinate goes up when you run to the first number, then add the farthest distance to the farthest point. If it goes down, then subtract the farthest distance from the farthest point. The number you get from doing this will tell you the coordinate of the tripwire. So keep running until you reach it and put it down. Now go and connect the redstone trail from earlier to your tripwire. Wherever the signal from the trail stops, put a repeater leading into a block with a redstone torch on the other side to invert the signal. Then, run a redstone wire all the way from the torch to the beginning of the first redstone trail. Replace the redstone torch there with a repeater. Add repeaters so that the signal coming from the torch to the block reaches the repeater leading into the marker trail. Now, use the second formula to calculate how many ticks you need to delay the gates. We'll call this number the gate delay. Next, count the number of ticks that the redstone signal has to move through on its way from the tripwire to the first gate. This includes the repeaters in the markers themselves. We'll call this number the current delay. So subtract the current delay from the gate delay. The number you get is the number of redstone ticks you need to add to the wire so that the fastest horse has enough time to make it up to, but not past, the last marker. Add that many ticks with redstone repeaters. Remember, you can add three more ticks to each repeater that is already on the trail. Just make sure you don't touch any of the repeaters after this one. You need the delay you're adding to affect all the markers. And if you add it to any of the repeaters after this one, it won't affect any of the gates coming before it, and the gates won't come up at the same time. After you've maxed out all the repeaters that are already on the line, you can add more ticks by replacing the redstone with repeaters. Each new repeater you add can increase the amount of delay by four. If you just want to build a hoarder with more speed rows, then you've already seen everything you need to. So goodbye, leave a like if you liked it, and if you didn't, then leave a dislike. I appreciate the honest feedback. Really. But if you're curious how I came up with these formulas and you're not afraid of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some slightly monstrous equine equations, then stick around for this last part. So the goal was to make the gates all close right when the fastest possible horse, who runs at a speed of 14.5125 blocks per second, reaches the last gate after triggering the tripwire. The gates also need to close right when the slowest possible horse, who runs 4.8375 blocks per second, reaches the first gate. We only know two things about the hoarder, how long each pen is, and how many rows it will have. How do we figure out where the horses should start and how much time they should have to run? Let's think about it this way. If the fastest ever horse and the slowest ever horse both started running from the same point at the same time, the fastest horse would get ahead of the slowest horse very quickly and a gap would form between their noses. 
As time went on, that gap would get wider and wider. What we need to figure out is how long it would take for this gap to get as wide as the distance between where the fastest horse gets stopped and where the slowest horse gets stopped. We can already figure out how wide that gap needs to be. All we need to do is measure the distance between the last gate and the first gate. We want the fast horse to stop just before the last gate, so the gap includes the block just before the last gate. This gap stretches past all the other pens before the last one, except for the one block before the first gate. So we can take the length of the spaces between the markers and multiply it by the number of speed rows. You might think that we'd want to multiply it by one less than the number of speed rows, since we don't want to count the last one because the gap won't include it. However, we aren't counting that row. We're actually counting an imaginary ghost row at the beginning. Why would we want to do that? Well, you can think of the hoarder as if it were a giant fork. The markers are like the tines of the fork, and the speed rows are the spaces between the tines. A fork with four tines would have three spaces between the tines. If we wanted a hoarder with ten speed rows, that would be like getting a fork with ten spaces. That fork would have eleven tines. By that same logic, we would want to build our ten speed hoarder so that it has eleven markers which is why we add the imaginary marker to our formula. If we didn't, only the absolute slowest possible horse would end up in the last row. It would be a waste of space because you'll probably never find a horse that slow in your survival world. Your hoarder would have one less degree of precision than you wanted it to have because the last row would be useless. So, back to our formula to find the length of the gap, we multiply the number of spaces between the markers by the number of speed rows. How much space is between each speed row? We can find that by adding the length of the inside of the pen, with two blocks for the walls on each side, and then add two more for the spaces between each pen. In this case, the spaces are eight blocks wide. So the formula to find the distance between where the fastest horse should be stopped and where the slowest horse should be stopped is the length of the inside of each pen plus four, multiplied by the number of speed rows. We'll call this the distance between fastest and slowest, or DBFS. So, how long after the horses start running will the gap between the horses reach the same length as the DBFS? The gap is a distance, and it increases at a constant rate, so we can model it on the old faithful distance equals rate times time formula. In this case, the distance is the DBFS, and we want to solve for time. But what is the rate? The rate is how fast the gap between the fastest and slowest horses increases. The fastest horse runs at the speed of 14.5125 blocks per second, and the slowest horse runs at 4.8375 blocks per second. If the slowest horse was trying to chase the fastest horse, and the rider was trying to measure the speed of the fast horse with a radar gun, he'd get a value of 9.675 blocks per second, because the fastest horse would be covering 9.675 more blocks every second than the slow horse. This is how fast that gap is increasing. That's the rate we're looking for. So back to our distance equals rate times time formula. The distance is the DBFS. The rate is the rate at which the gap is increasing, which is 9.675 blocks per second, and we're solving for time. So we just divide the DBFS by 9.675 and there we go. The time the horses should have to run is equal to the DBFS divided by 9.675. Now that we have the amount of time the horses should have to run, we can find out how many redstone ticks we need to delay the redstone signal. We just take the time formula and multiply it by 10, because there are 10 redstone ticks in every second. Then we subtract 2 to compensate for the pistons, which takes 2 redstone ticks to fully extend. If they begin extending just before the horse reaches them, the horse can still run over them. We can calculate how many redstone ticks to delay the signal, but how do we figure out where to put the tripwire hook? We already have a formula to calculate how much time the horses have to run, so just make use of the good old distance equals rate times time formula and multiply it by the speed of the fastest horse. That will give you the distance that the tripwire needs to be from the last marker. And so now we have both of the formulas that I showed earlier. These two formulas will tell you all you need to know to adjust the number of speed levels you put in your hoarder, and how long you make each of the pens. If you had any trouble keeping up with this, then don't feel ashamed to go back and re-watch parts of this. I went as fast as I could to keep the video as short as possible. 
If you find any problems or you have any suggestions, then feel free to leave a comment. I love getting feedback from you guys. Until next time, goodbye.